All right, so it is pouring outside. It just started downpouring, guys, and we have a metal roof here at the gym, so hopefully you can hear me okay. My apologies if the audio is a little bit crazy. That's why we got the wireless mics. Hopefully everything's coming through well. But the drill that we wanna to talk to you about today is called a step over drill or a walk after drill is what I tend to call it with my athletes. So tell me if this sounds like or tell me if this looks like your athletes, okay? Maybe they've been throwing with you for a couple weeks, maybe they've been throwing with you for a couple months, even a couple years. And then all of a sudden they're in their power position or they're coming out of their glide and they're getting ready to release, they're getting ready to throw and everything looks awesome. They're getting ready to throw. It looks like it's gonna be a real big throw and at the last second they fall away from their throw and they fall backwards. They go to push and they maybe fall off to the side or they go to push and they're all the way back here. They're throwing from back here and they're not getting aggressive near the toe board. Happens all the time. It's kind of weird when it happens because it's something new and you go, hey, you, have never done, you haven't done that in months. You, where did this coming from? Like, why are you, are you scared? Like, what's going on? What we as coaches tend to do when something like this happens, when we can see something visually where they're not getting over the toe board, they're not getting aggressive and attacking the toe board, is we try to give verbal and visual cues for something that your athlete might not be feeling. So I see it a lot, I'm guilty of it, I do it a lot. One of the things that I always say is I go, try to get your hips over the toe board. You hear coaches say things like, try to get your hips over the toe board, stomach over the toe board, chest over the toe board, try to reach your arm out as far as possible, try to get really far over the toe board. One of the things I used to say to my athletes is pretend that you're reaching out and you're gonna reach out and drop the shot at the 50 foot line. Really try to reach, really try to extend. Those are all visual cues. So we're kind of giving them and we're telling them what we want them to do and what we want to see. The problem is they're throwers. They're in the circle. They're not like outside of their body looking at themselves. They're not having some out of body experience watching themselves and going, oh, that's what I'm doing. They have to feel it. They need to know what it feels like when they're in the circle, not just what it looks like from a coach looking on at them doing the movement. They need to actually know what it feels like. So that's why I like this step over drill. And again, I call it a walk after drill. It's very simple. It gets them to walk after the shot. So they're basically following on purpose. So they're actually going to walk after the shot and it teaches them to get over the toe board. So how does it work? What does it look like? Well, we all know at this point what a standing throw looks like. Power position throw, your back, all of your weight, your hips, your, your hip, your knee, your ankle, all stacked up right on top of each other. All your joints are stacked and all of your weight is back on this power leg, on the power foot. So all of your weight is back. And then as you throw, you start to open up that blocking arm, you start to ground that blocking foot, and then you start to turn and drive and push your body, shift weight and push your body onto that blocking foot. So it's a transfer of weight. All of your weight is back on the power leg, and then as you throw, you shift that weight and you transfer all of your weight onto your blocking leg, onto the blocking foot. It's basically walking. Now this is something, I mean, we all know how to walk. Our throwers have all been walking since they were little babies. When you walk, you have to shift your weight and take a step. Shift your weight, take a step. Shift your weight, take a step. Shift your weight, take a step. We know how to shift weight and take a step. So all we're gonna do is have our athletes walk after the ball when they throw it. So it'll look like this. Very simple, standing throw, push, and then keep walking right after the shot. Okay, show you again. Standing throw, and then keep walking right after the shot. Now if they can't walk after the shot, that means that they're not shifting their weight. That means that they're not transferring their weight onto that blocking foot. 
So it might look like this. They might be in this position and be here and go. And then they shift and step. They'll be able to feel that they have not transferred their weight. This is also a great drill if you do have those athletes that it looks like they're gonna have a great throw and at the last second they fall off to the side. Because if you fall off to the side, you can't go walk after the shot. You've gotta go up, stand up straight, and then go walk after it. So it gets your athletes to stay nice and tall at the finish. It gets your athletes to attack that toe board to get everything over the toe board and get full extension. And it gets your athletes to think about throwing straight down the middle. Gets your athletes to think about being tall and throwing straight. Their body is already facing this way. Power is getting delivered in that direction. We want them to push the ball in that same direction. So it's gonna correct and fix a lot of things that happen at the toe board, and it's real simple. They've gotta transfer that weight, and then they have to continue walking right after the ball. It seems really simple, and it's because it is but you will be amazed, it's like magic. When they don't do it or when they realize they can't do it, they automatically start to push and then just walk right after that shot. And no, you might be thinking this is gonna teach them how to foul and that it's gonna create a bad habit with them fouling and walking out the front. Trust me, I've been doing this for 20 years. I have never taught somebody how to foul by doing this drill. If anything, it gets them to extend a lot farther, it gets them to push a lot farther and be more aware and more ginger around the toe board so that they don't foul as much. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it from here. Thank you all so much for checking out the video. As I say at the end of every video, make sure to click that card that's gonna pop up here. Go check out our overnight throwing camps. All of these drills and many, many, many more are all done at our overnight camps. We work with high school athletes from all around the country. This year we have two overnight throwing camps in Pennsylvania. I hope you guys show up. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give us a like, leave a comment down below. Any questions that you guys have, I will answer them for you in a future video. Thanks for checking out the channel, thanks for watching the video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.